For this problem, we are asked to find the Thevian voltage with respects to terminals A and B. We need to express our answer in polar form and make the magnitude positive and the angle negative for our part A. So those are the bounds that we have right here. We are given that our sinusoidal voltage source in our circuit is that V of G is equal to 240 times cosine with our omega being 5000 times T. And this is being measured in our VRMS. This is super important and we're gonna come back to this in a second. We're given this circuit diagram here and we're also asked to find B, but we'll get to that in a second. So starting with A, we need to find our VT of H. Well, for our VT of H, we're going to look back to engineering 17, which is intro to circuit analysis, where we have the source transformations. Those notes will be in the description below, 4.9 source transformations. We need to convert the entire left side from this voltage and impedance in series to a current and impedance in parallel. This is just one way to do this problem. There are many different ways, but this is one of the easiest. We are rewriting this with our current in here, and then we are going to have our impedance in, in parallel like this. And our impedance, we need to convert this impedance as well as our capacitor and other inductor into the actual impedance form. For a inductor, we're going to have that our Z of L be equal to our J times the omega times L. Well, our omega is 5,000, so we're gonna have 5,000 times our inductance, which is 100, times milli, which is 10 to the negative cubed. This is going to give us 500 um, times J for both of our inductors. Now for capacitor, it's a little bit different. It's going to be Z of C is equal to negative J over our omega times C. So we're gonna have negative one divided by 5,000 divided by one divided by 10 to the negative six. And the reason why you have 10 to the negative six is because a micro is 10 to the negative six and we just want it in farads. Now this is going to give us a negative J times 200. So we can plug these values in here. So this inductor is going to be J times 500. We can combine the resistor and impedance together. And this is, will just be one impedance. And this is going to be 100 plus J 500. Next, we will have our capacitor. And this is a negative J times 200. And then now we have our terminals A and B. We don't have our current yet. We never found it. This is going to be our current here. So we're going to do that right now. Well, our current we know is going to be equal to the voltage over our resistance. Remember, this is going to be the Vmax over our resistance. However, we don't have our Vmax. We have a VRMS value right here. This is usually our Vmax. However, it's a VRMS because it's denoted as a VRMS. So to do this conversion, we're going to look in section 10.3, the RMS value, and we are going to use the formula where we have our VRMS equal to our Vmax divided by our square root. Now we need to rewrite this equation so that we can get our Vmax. We're gonna have our Vmax equal to our square root of two times the VRMS, and we know that our VRMS is 240, so we're gonna plug in 240 in here. That means that our Vmax is equal to approximately 339.4 volts. So this is our V of M. Now we are going to plug it into our current. So we will have 339.4, and this is divided by our J times 500. Now we're gonna divide the constants and the imaginary number J is gonna be brought up top. So it's gonna flip and be a negative J. And this is gonna give us approximately negative J times 0.68. And this is the value for our current. So that will go there. Now, before we go any further, we are going to combine our impedances. We're going to just start with these two because they're in parallel. And then the parallel of these two, we are going to find with this last one right here, the J500. We're just going to do it one at a time because it's a lot simpler than trying to do them all together. Once we have this, we'll actually solve for B, because B is asking us to find the Thevian impedance with respect to terminals A and B. And so once we find all the impedance, that's the Thevian impedance. So we're just going to plug in the Thevian impedance and angle here. To set this up, I'm gonna start with the rightmost part first. We're gonna have one over our negative J times 200 plus our next impedance. So we're gonna have one over 100 plus J times 500, all being raised to the negative first power. This is going to be the value once we do all of that. Now we are going to want to convert this to the polar form so that we may divide them. And to convert to the polar form, we're gonna use the formula where we have our Vmax is equal to the square root of our real number squared plus our imaginary number squared. And that our angle is equal to the tangent negative one of our imaginary number over our real number. From here, we're gonna get these values. 
and we know that we are going to divide the numbers. And for the angles, we're going to subtract the denominator angle from our numerator angle. And if we do this, we are going to get approximately 322.5 with an angle of approximately negative 83 degrees. So this is the value for the first rightmost two resistors. Now we need to combine this with this value because they are now in parallel since both of these are what we just found. So we're going to do the same thing where we have 1 over our J500 plus 1 over, and this is what we found right here. Now we can't combine something that's in polar and rectangular, so we're going to have to convert this. To convert from polar to rectangular, we're going to use the formula where we have our number and then a parenthesis times the cosine of our angle plus J times the sine of our angle. This will give us the rectangular form. The rectangular form for this is going to be approximately 40 minus j times 320. So again, this is the rectangular form, and now we can plug this value into here. And now we're going to solve for it the same way as we did just above of it. These are the values that we're going to get, and now we are going to use these equations to convert them to the polar form so that we may divide them. And this is going to be the equation that we get. So now we're going to do the same thing where we divide out the real numbers, and for the angles we're going to subtract the denominator from the numerator. And this is going to give us approximately 875 with an angle of negative 70. Now, this is our impedance. And if we were to redraw our diagram, because currently it's like I and then our impedance here and then our terminals A and terminal B. But again, if we were to redraw this using source transformation, this impedance would be our Thevian impedance. That means that our ZA of B is going to be equal to approximately 875. And then our angle is going to be equal to approximately negative 70. So we have found part B. Now we are going to solve for our part A, finding the Thevian voltage. We found this current earlier in the problem up here in blue. And now we're going to use source transformations to convert this back into the Thevian equivalent. And the Thevian equivalent is where we have our plus minus voltage, so our VT of H right here. And then we have our impedance right here. And then we have our terminal A and terminal B right here. To find our VT of H, we are going to use the formula where we have our current times our resistance or impedance in this case. We can't multiply a rectangular and polar form together, so we're going to have to convert one of them. We will just convert our polar form, so our impedance, and then multiply it by our current. So converting our impedance to rectangular form, we are going to get this. Now we're going to factor in this part. These are the values we're going to get. Now we want it in polar form. Obviously the answer asks for us in polar form. So we need to convert this from rectangular to polar. And to do that, we are again going to use these sets of equations right here. And from here, we are going to get approximately 594 with an angle of 20 degrees. So this should be our VT of H. We'll check it right now. Our VT of H is approximately 594 and our angle is negative 160. So it's not the 20 degrees that we have right here. The reason why is because we actually didn't check our angle when we plug this in. In fact, we didn't check our angle for any of these either. We just got lucky in that they were correct. So to check our angle, we need to do this for all of them. So for this bottom part, I'm going to start off with the 100 plus J300, where we have a graph like this, and our real number is on the x-axis and our imaginary number is on the y-axis. And if we graph both of these, we can see it's in the first quadrant. We can see that the angle we got is also in the first quadrant, so that's correct. If we do the same for the top one, our imaginary number is in the negative, our real number is in the positive, so we have to have something in the fourth quadrant, our angle's in the fourth quadrant. We are then going to repeat the process for this value, and we can see that it is correct, and then we're going to repeat the process for this value, and we're going to see that this is correct. So all of these check out. However, when we go down here and we do it for this, we're going to see that it is incorrect, because we have our graph like this, our imaginary number is negative, our real number is negative as well, so our angle has to be somewhere in here. Well, the angle that we got is a positive, meaning that it's actually in the first quadrant right here. It needs to be in the third quadrant. So to fix this, you're going to add 180 degrees to it. This is very common. It's not really an error. All we need to do is add 180 to it. So once we add 180 to this, it's going to give us an angle of 200 degrees. And we have our magnitude as 594. Our magnitude is correct. However, the angle is still incorrect. It's a negative 160. But this is actually correct we do have an angle of 200 degrees. So the reason why it's a negative 160 is because in the actual question, it asks to make the magnitude positive and specifically also to make our angle negative. 
Well, this is the positive variant of our angle. If we want the negative variant of our angle, all we need to do is instead of add 180, which is what we normally do, is we have to subtract 180. So I'm just going to overwrite this positive with a negative, and this is going to give us the angle of negative 160. That's super. That's some super important concept to remember. Um, all in the instructions, just like this VRMS. Really important to pay attention to what they're actually asking. Otherwise, we will probably write it incorrectly. Another way you can do this is just take this 200 degrees. We know it's right here and we know that a complete circle is 360 degrees so we'll just do 360 minus 200 that will give us 160 and we know it's negative so it's 160. so those are two different ways to look at that part but that is how you would go about for solving for this problem for more network analysis problems there's a playlist in the description and if you want notes that cover this material and coursework they're also in the description below the like button